his story quickly, but he's going to take us through also what's happened in the course of the last year. Uh, so I don't want to steal his thunder. Please help me welcome Chris Gilpin to the stage. How you guys doing? I'm so glad to be back and congratulations on two years. This is amazing, you know. Um, my name is Chris Gilpin and I am the CEO of Signal Vault. It's a small electronics protection company. I have people who ask me how to describe the company. I'm not really sure. I guess it's credit card security. But I was on Shark Tank, but I started off, um, I guess, my entrepreneurial journey when I was in college. Um, I actually dropped out of UCF at the age of 23 and started a trucking company with my father in Palm Coast called One Fall Trucking. Um, I never really liked working for anyone. That's just kind of been my, my nature. I just like being independent and working on my own. So we ran the company for about two years before the economy began to take a downturn and we liquidated everything. And then I became the senior consultant for the National Prime Stop Program, which was an organization that went to different companies in Florida. And we talked about identity theft and computer crime and safety to the staff. It was during my time in the National Crime Stop Program that I attended a security conference and I saw the crime of electronic pickpocketing demonstrated for the first time. And that is someone walking past you and being able to steal your information without ever touching you or your wallet. You can use a cell phone. I think the guy that I saw in the demonstration used a scanner. He purchased online for about $25. So immediately I'm like, okay, how do I protect myself from this crime so I can tell the people that I talk to every single week that they need to protect themselves as well. And at the time, you could wrap your card, wallet, or head in aluminum foil, and that actually does work. But I wasn't a big fan of that. It wasn't very practical. So I bought a metal wallet. You've seen these wallets online. They're now for sale in every store you walk into, basically. A loom wallet is really the brand. And they're supposed to be indestructible. So I bought one of these things, and I keep my wallets in my back pocket. And within a week of sitting on this thing, I guess I had <laughs> too much junk in my trunk, but I broke it within <laughs> that first week. So I said, there's got to be a better way, and there really wasn't a better, more practical <coughs> solution. So that's when I started working on the idea of the signal ball. And signal ball is essentially um, an insert into your wallet. It's a personal jammer for any wallet. So you can protect any wallet. You don't have to buy a different wallet or put sleeves or anything else. You can protect any wallet in seconds just by installing my device inside your wallet. And I didn't have the money that I needed to start my company. I told my fiance I thought I would need about $8,000 to build out the prototype, get them working, you know, uh, you know, website, build inventory, and start doing some marketing. But I didn't have the $8,000. But what I did have was a lottery ticket that had been sitting in my car for about two months. Florida lottery ticket, quick thing. And um, I, I, I don't check my tickets like regularly. They'll sit in my car for months at a time. So in fact, I just checked some. I had a winner that was back in like June. I just checked it like last week. So um, I'm checking my lottery tickets, you know, my once every two month annual trip to the store. And one of them is a winner. And it turns out that I hit five out of six numbers in the Florida lottery and I won $7,908.50. I could not make this up. I, uh, I left that big check that they sent me at my office. Unfortunately, my son was sick this morning, so I was running a little late. But uh, it was uh, exactly, it was less than $100 short of what I said I would need to start my company. So of course, I went out and I bought rooms for my car, we went on vacation, I bought a new walk. Just kidding. Started my company, I used all the funds into starting my dream. And um, I'm so glad that I did because it exploded. I launched Signal Vault right before the target data breach in 2013. You guys remember the data breach? Huge data breach. Electronic security, computer crime, like identity theft is on everyone's mind, and I was able to um, do uh, over a dozen news reports across the country for local news stations on how consumers need to protect themselves moving forward, the target data breach, what happened, how we can prevent it from happening again, and that was like really my biggest obstacle, consumer education, because my product, I had a great product, but it was really just informing the public on how or why they need my product, and that's, I think, a big deal for really any company, uh, consumer education. So that went on for a year. We were very successful in our first year. I think we did $156,000 in sales, which was pretty good for most startups, I think. They'd be happy. Um, and everyone that I talked to said, hey, you need to go on Shark Tank. This is a great idea. Like, it would be that easy just to get on Shark Tank. Um, but I did apply for Shark Tank in January of 2015 down in Miami. I went to an open casting. And um, I waited 12 hours to get 60 seconds to talk or tell about my product to a producer. And I'll never forget this. I'm waiting to pitch, 
and about 10 people in front of me, there is another company that's selling the RFID wallets. You know, it's, it's, it's like a competing product of mine, really. It's not the same uh, concept, but it's uh, the same industry. <coughs> so I completely, I, at that moment, I had to completely change what I was going to say in that 60 seconds. And I had been practicing this for weeks. So I'm about 10 minutes away from pitching my idea, so I completely had to change it because I said, how am I going to differentiate myself from this company that went before me? Maybe they'll just say, well, this person went first, so let's just go ahead and choose them over this guy. So while I'm in line, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say, and I said, I have to shock these people. I have to be memorable. So I remember, like, verbatim what I said to this person. name was Mindy. I said, I, I had handed my information. I said, my name is Chris Gilpin. I'm the CEO of Signal while everyone was waiting in line all day long, practicing their pitches, I was walking through the crowd with my cell phone, stealing their credit card numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and she looked up at me, and I said, uh, my product, the Sigma Wall Credit Debit Card Protector, is a revolutionary way to protect yourself from this new crime from of electronic pickpocketing. I have great margins, margins, amazing sales, and if you give me the opportunity, I will pause the feeding frenzy in the shark tank. And, and it was perfect. I, if I hadn't been holding the mic, I would have held it out and just dropped it, you know, right there. That, that was my moment, you know. Um, it resulted in me getting a phone call about two months later from Shark Tank saying that I made to the next step, and they wanted to go ahead and pursue this more, which of course I was completely stoked about. And I was actually on the season seven premiere of Shark Tank last year. It was uh, September 25th, and I have a really quick, short clip of my pitch and my deal. This guy. <laughs> no? Okay. Alright, so we'll skip the video. But essentially, I um, received a deal with Lori Grenier and Robert Kersbeck um, for 25% of my company, and things basically skyrocketed from that point. Yeah. I have to show it. I'm just going to skip the slide. Yeah, it's just gonna look here. Okay. Um, there, yeah, Ashley Kutcher was a guest sharp on my episode. I had a really, I, I had a little short clip of him saying, uh, I told him my margins, I told him like all the sharks my margins, and he goes, my man, and that was like my favorite part of the whole episode. <laughs> um, everyone talks about, well, people that have been on Shark Tank talk about the Shark Tank effect and how it can destroy websites and it just completely just catapults your company from nothing to, you know, huge numbers that you never thought you would do before. Up until Shark Tank, uh, my company had done about $350,000 in sales. Um, in two years prior to me actually appearing on Shark Tank, and we did that in about 48 hours after Shark Tank, which has been, I mean, it, it was, it, it was mind-blowing. Um, since then, we've done $3.2 million in sales in the past 14 months. We have been uh, featured in Forbes, QVC, actually, before I went on Shark Tank, I asked them to, um, you know, think about having my product on, it was really demonstratable, it was something that I think would appeal to their viewers, and they were like, eh, we're good. Lori is the queen of Shark Tank, as she's called, or so, queen of QVC, and she had me on QVC the night my Shark Tank episode aired, and we sold out in less than eight minutes. So, um, in business, sometimes it's really not what you know or how good your product is, it's who you know. And since then, I've been on Shark, or I've been on QVC, 15 times. I'm going to be on for my 16th and 17th time this Friday and Saturday. You guys tune in if you watch that channel. And we've done over $1.5 million in sales on QVC alone. So, I mean, that's it. It's, it's really, it's really nice um, and it kind, of, it kind of bumps me out thinking about how someone may have an amazing product that doesn't have the same opportunities that this just might be missing out on a huge amount of sales simply because they don't have the, the connections that are necessary to get in those places. So last year, um, I had a young woman, her name is Kristen Colsanti. You guys know Kristen? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She uh, gave me her card afterwards. She was like, hey, I do graphic design. And, um, you know, and I talked to a lot of people afterwards, but other people gave me her card. She gave me her card. She said, oh, I do graphic design. And, um, you know, I'm just getting started out here. And I said, okay, yeah. You know, I had an in-house graphic designer at the time. 
Kristen's work was so amazing that I now have her on retainer every single month. So, um, I, and I've in, been able to, I think, introduce to a couple of companies that have given her some additional work. So, um, again, I am now in a position where I think I have a little bit of leverage. So, if you guys have any ideas or if you think you need any help or assistance, I am here at your disposal because I was where so many entrepreneurs are at many times where they just don't know where to go um, or who to reach out to. So um, use me as a resource if you can. Exploit me. I'm used to it. <laughs> um, let's see. One of my favorite quotes, I can't even say it's a quote really, it's just a saying about entrepreneurship is uh, it's living a few years of your life like most people won't, so you can spend the rest of your life like most people can't. And that is really my motto. It's my mantra. It is, it's playing in my head over and over. Every night I sleep at the office. Every week that goes by that I don't see my kids. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I think we have all accepted. You know, if this is the first time that you're ever hearing this, I think that hard work and dedication that you put into your business and into your goals and your dreams that you're doing now, you're laying down that groundwork. Um, I think we all know that's going to pay off later. And I think that's extremely important. So I hope that this maybe sticks with you guys now and just keeps pushing you because again, I, I was doing I was doing Signal Vault two years before I got really my big break. Um, and you never know when that next opportunity or that next door is going to open. So just keep pushing. That's like really like what I tell everyone that I talk to. Keep pushing yourself, keep going. And um, what the future for Signal Vault looks really good. We're gonna be in Bed Bath & Beyond, I think by the end of this month. And then we're working with Target and Walmart as well on getting Signal Vault into stores, um, big box retailers. We are expanding to the UK as well because it's a really huge market there, UK, Ireland, Australia. Um, we actually just finished our real retail packaging less than, uh, I would say, uh, three months ago. It took a really long time to kind of get this button down, but this is what we're going to have in stores. Um, and we're also going to be giving away a few of these today, so make sure that everyone gave their business card and their little fish bowl that you guys have to go to yeah. I'll get it. Now I'll be sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there any questions? Should we like... Thank you.